are you doing, man? Well, the pizza box wouldn't fit in my little job site fridge I bring to the job site, so now it'll fit. You got pizza in there? Of course. A little cardboard dust never hurt anybody. <laughs> nice. Hey gang, I'm Paul with Sledback. Welcome back to our channel. Jordan and I are back here on our main remodel project and I'm actually standing in what is going to be the future master bathroom shower. Now the old shower here, that thing was a bunker. In fact, it was built so well, I had to go buy a brand new Bosch demolition hammer. Don't you hate it when you have to go buy a Bosch tool, right? Just to take that thing apart, but it was a beast. It worked fantastic. If you're interested in seeing that video, we'll put a link right here. In our previous video on this project, we put up our Triton backer board, covered it with Schluter all set thin set, and covered all that with our Schluter Curdy waterproofing membrane. Then we got down here on the floor, used the Schluter curb, cut it down to the height we wanted, mitered it in the corner, and put it on the cement, again, with some Schluter all set thin set. So that's all ready to go. So now it's ready for the pre-slope. So in this video, we're gonna show you how to get a perfectly sloped, professional looking pre-slope, plus, we have a trick up our sleeve that is super DIY friendly and we can't wait to show it to you. Let's get started. So what is a pre-slope? Well, the pre-slope establishes the slope of your shower floor towards your drain. You wouldn't want to make this flat, right? Then your shower is not going to drain properly. It has to slope towards our center drain. And there are several ways to do that. There are pre-manufactured foam pans. Schluter makes one, we've used them, we love them, but they have a couple limitations. The main one is your subfloor, whether it's a concrete slab like this one or a wood subfloor, has to be perfectly flat and smooth and flat is the key. Just check out this slab, for example. Way over here in this corner, I'm at one and seven sixteenths to my laser. And in this corner, I'm at just over one and five eighths. So I'm almost a quarter inch out. So if I put that foam pan on a slab that's tilted, it's not going to drain properly, is it? One side's going to be high, the other side's going to be low. The solution to that problem is to pour self-leveling underlayment in here, spend a lot of time to get it perfectly smooth and flat, let it dry overnight, come back the next day, then set your pan, set your drain, your curdy collar, and your waterproofing around the perimeter, and you're ready to tile that next day. The method we're going to use for our pre-slope is a method that we call here in the South a dry pack. What's a dry pack? Well, it's basically deck mud. It's sand and cement. It comes in a bag and it's available at the home centers or at your tile distributor. You mix it up with a little bit of water, not too wet, and you can form it just like you were building sand castles when you were a kid at the beach. Now, obviously we're on a concrete slab here, but what if we were on a raised foundation, second floor, and you had a plywood subfloor? You wouldn't want to put your deck mud directly on the wood. It's going to suck all the moisture out of your dry pack. It's not going to be strong. So what we would recommend is a decoupling membrane. You could use Ditra, it's a Schluter product. You could even use Curdy if you wanted to. But if you wanted to save some bucks, just pick up some cheap tar paper. You're going to lay it down, staple it to your plywood so it doesn't curl up on you. Then you're going to try to find some stucco lath. Now I had a hard time finding this where we live. We have six home centers here. Only one of them had this, but they had 600 sheets. You're going to put that on top of your tar paper. Again, staple it down so it doesn't curl on you. And then your deck mud goes right on top. That makes it very strong on a wooden subfloor. With concrete, we don't need it. And this wire and tar paper is exactly the method we used on my mom's curbless shower. I know a lot of you were having questions about that. In fact, these are remnants from that project and it made for a super strong subfloor on her shower. But before we head outside, mix up our deck mud and throw it down, we have to know how high it's gonna be all around the perimeter. So let's show you how we figure that out. All right, I'm gonna start with a level because most people have a level. Now, funny thing about this one, I've used it a lot for this. And these end caps always get in my way because the cap is beveled and I can't get a mark on the bottom of the level because of the end cap. But I was like, you goofball, just take them off. I'm gonna throw those in the trash because I need this square edge more than I need the protection for the end of the level. I'm careful with my tools, right? So we're gonna put the level on our drain, which we set level already. And I'm gonna reach under with my marker and mark on the bottom of the level onto my curb. Can you get that, Jordan? Yep. All right, now that mark is level with my curb. But remember, we don't want it level. Our pan needs to be higher, but at least this gives us a starting point, right? So how much higher than this mark do we need to have our pre-slope? 
Well, industry standard is a quarter inch per foot. So if the wall of your shower was four feet away from your drain, pretty big shower, you'd have an inch of fall. A quarter inch per foot at four feet, one inch. Now on this shower, it's pretty small about three feet square. Now this dimension, it's about a foot and a half. But if we take this long dimension in the diagonal, which some people do, right? Because the water's traveling there also, we're at two feet. So why don't we give ourselves half an inch of rise? So we're gonna come at this mark, make a mark half an inch above it, and that is the top of our deck mud. And then it's gonna slope from there all the way to our drain, and it's gonna be level all the way around the perimeter on all four sides so that our wall tiles look perfect. Well, how are we gonna get the pre-slope level all the way around? All right, that's a great question. Now let's come on inside the curb. Now remember, this mark right here is the one we established level with the drain. And this one, half an inch higher, is gonna be the top of our pre-slope. Now we need to extend it all the way around, right? Now you could try to get the level in here and, and try to look under there like that and get a pen and mark it, but you can already see how difficult that's gonna be. Now I have my laser right here. Now check this out. We can use the laser to move that line around. And check it out. That Bosch laser fits right inside the Schluter drain. Those are both German companies. Coincidence? I think not. Now you can see my laser line right there. I can simply trace it all the way around on the perimeter, but we're not even gonna use that method. The one we're gonna use is the one we mentioned at the beginning of the video. It's kind of our secret sauce for this video. So we're gonna go outside, get all the components ready and show you what we're talking about. Alrighty guys, there it is. This is your secret weapon to get that perfect installation on your pre-slope. What the heck are they? Well, they are foam screeds. They're gonna go around the perimeter and establish the perimeter height of your pre-slope. How did we make them? Well, we simply measured each wall of our shower, wrote that down, cut these to length, of course, with the stud pack miter, and yes, we even beveled the top as indicated by the arrow. That's my top. So how do we get our height? Well, remember that mark we made down here on the curb? We just measured from there to the slab, deducted about an eighth or a quarter because we knew our slab was out. It's gonna vary on your job. But now I say, let's put them in. We were actually gonna glue them, but I think these inside miters are gonna fit so tight, maybe one screw in the middle, that's all we need. Let's slide them in, check it out. All right, we're gonna put this piece in and we're gonna split the laser beam. Half the laser beam is gonna be down here and the other part's gonna be up on our curb. Just like that, that's what I'm looking for. All right, let me go grab some screws and we'll screw this one off and we'll do the rest. Alrighty guys, I changed my plan. I am gonna throw some glue on there. We threw some screws in it. It's just not strong enough for me. We're gonna be putting quite a bit of down pressure on this as we screed. I don't want it to move because if it moves, that ruins the whole plan, right? So quick audible, I'm gonna put some liquid nails on there, screw it in, we'll be good to go. There we go, very cool. This screed right here is what's gonna make you look like you've been doing this your whole life and you're gonna get a perfect pre-slope from the outside perimeter of your shower all the way to the drain, no matter the shape of your shower or the location of your drain. Now, a few words about this material that we used for our screed. Remember, we used the offcut from our curb. And whatever you use here needs to be compatible with your waterproofing system. So a piece of wood is probably not your best option. You could probably even use a piece of the Triton backer board that we used on our walls. When we cut a line on it and snapped it, it was dead straight. But remember on this, we actually beveled it just because we could. You're not gonna be able to bevel a piece of backer board. So enough said about that. I think it's time to head outside, mix up our deck mud. Then all we gotta do, come in here, dump it in and screed it off. Let's head outside and do some mixing. All right gang, here's our product we're using for our deck mud. It's by Laticrete, their number 209 floor mud. It's for use on interior applications, so couldn't use it outside, right? for mortar beds, leveling beds, and shower pan fill and slope, which is exactly what we're using it for. 
Now this is not a self-leveling underlayment and it's not a grout like you would pack under a piece of heavy machinery. Very specific product. So let's bust it open and start mixing up some mud. Yeah, that ain't working, dude. There's so little water in here, which is what you want. We're just gonna dump it in the wheelbarrow and use a hoe. I'm a what? <laughs> all right, gang, dry pack is all mixed up. But before we dump it in here, we're gonna give this a drink of water so it doesn't soak all the water out of our dry pack material. All right, now we're ready to dump our dry pack in. All right, we're getting close. Now, it is really just a matter of connecting this point with this point all the way around. Now you'll notice I filled in my gap under the drain with the thin set I had over from yesterday, but here's a little tip for you. If you don't have thin set and you still need to fill that in when you're doing your dry pack stage, dump some here in the corner, put some water in it, mix it up right on your shower floor so it's a little bit looser. That way you can work it under there and it'll flow under the drain into all those areas. Then go right on top of it with this stuff. It's a good tip and it'll save you some time. But right now, I just have an old grout float I'm using to move the material and to lightly pack it down. Now when I say lightly, it's like this. That's all you need. That's, that's too hard. I can't tool that very well, but I can tool this a lot easier. See that? So I'm just gonna start shoving this into the corners and under the drain and leveling it out. And you can already see how easy this is gonna be. Alrighty gang, you got to this point and your dry pack is gonna look something like this. I usually work a quarter to a third at a time, whatever I can reach, that way I can put my hand here without making a mess. Now, how are you gonna make it look perfect? Well, the pros have a tool for that, right? They have aluminum screeds, all that kind of stuff. If you're doing this at your house, save your money. All you need to do is get a straight piece of plywood, rip it straight on your saw or with a circular saw with a guide, and that straight edge is gonna be all you need to do one shower. On this particular one, we have two links. One about 18, it'll get us from here all the way out to this corner, and the same on the other side, so we have a little bit longer one to reach over here. What you don't wanna do is go too long and have it ride on this opposite flange. Because see, now we have a gap here. You want it from the screed to this edge of the flange all the way around. So I'm gonna grab my grout float, and I'm gonna start, start removing my dry pack from around the edges. And you can see how easily that works. Remember, just like when you were a kid at the beach. Clean up that corner. And now I'm ready for my plywood. So when you use your plywood, you don't have a lot of room here to move this back and forth like you were screening concrete. So I just use a slight scraping motion. I'm gonna scrape towards the camera so you can see it. And you can already tell that I'm uncovering the drain and I'm flush over here at the screen. And then I give it a few taps. And look what a beautiful job that does. I'm not done yet, but that's the idea. So let's finish this whole area and then we'll keep going to the next area. All right, now on previous shower pans that we've done like this, not the screed, but a mud base, we've actually put a layer of thin set here with a notched trowel. Again, to hydrate the cement, but more importantly, to bond our dry pack to our concrete. Because this is not gonna adhere to this. This is too dry to form a bond with the concrete. It'll be a little bit, but not like thin set would. But after we did that video, somebody commented and said, you know what, you don't really need to do that. Because back in the day when we had a vinyl liner, 
there was no bond at all. The, the dry pack was just sitting in the vinyl as one hunk. And that's absolutely true. So this isn't going anywhere either. And so that's why we're not doing thin set. But if it makes you feel better, go ahead and put some thin set down. It'll be fine. You'll probably have extra at some point. Of course, point. always have extra. Alrighty guys, that is looking stunning. I am so happy with how this is turning out. And all we have left to do is this little corner right here. But we thought this would be a great time to pause in the action and show you how we do a thumbnail. As you can see, we pull the rag out of here. Obviously the rag's keeping our drain clear of debris, right? We pulled out the vacuum, picked up all the loose particles, and we cut a nice edge in right here so you can see the slope of our pre-slope. But like I said, gang, this is going so fast and this is so easy, anybody can do this. But if you don't have the means to cut foam backer board or you can't get foam backer board, you can do this in the traditional method. Isaac Ostrom has a bunch of great videos on how to do this in the traditional method, plus a bunch of other great stuff. Make sure you check him out. But for right now, let's dump the rest in here and finish our pre-slope. Stop messing with it, huh? And we are done. Look how great that looks, guys. That looks like it came out of a factory. Now, a few tips I learned along the way. If you're using a plywood screed or a wood screed or probably even an aluminum one, get a blade and keep that edge clean. If the dry pack builds up on there, you won't get a nice, straight, smooth edge. The other thing you're gonna notice, this is a little bit rough, like 40 grit sandpaper, right? But it's fine. You're gonna want some tooth on there because we're gonna put some more thin set on this with a layer of curdy to completely waterproof this whole thing and we're gonna water test it. But if you want it a little smoother, you could certainly take a steel trowel, go over it, and you're gonna be fine. It's already getting pretty hard over here. Now, after watching this video, gang, you should have 100% confidence in yourself that you can do a shower pan like this. But if you don't, or you don't have the time, check out something called a shower receptor. That's what we call it in the United States. It's a preformed shower pan, usually fiberglass with an acrylic coating, just like a fiberglass bathtub. And a lot of times they're made out of a faux stone. The drain's already set, it has a flange. You basically set it on the floor and you can tile your walls the same day. We used one recently nearby on that emergency bathroom project we did. We set the pan in the morning, did the walls in the afternoon, and they were ready to shower that evening. So check out a shower receptor if you've never seen one. Alrighty gang, that is a wrap on this video. We are absolutely stoked about this process and we sure hope it helps some of you out there get your shower completed. So you know what you need to do for us, right? Get some foam, make a perfect bordered bevel frame around your like button, slope it in so it drains well, smash it for us. That helps Jordan and I the most. Ask us a question, drop us a comment. How do you do it? And subscribe if you haven't already and we'll see you on our next video. Nice.